Hello, I'm Liam and this is the tour of the allotment on the 1st of July. I say the 1st of July, but actually it's a, um, a tour of the allotment plus a review of everything that I've been getting up to in the last month. So plenty of stuff from June, including harvesting of garlic and broad beans, picking of the first uh, tomato, literally one tomato and, a, and cucumber. There's lots of fruits in season, so gooseberries, red currants, Black corn looks as though it's, it's coming into season soon. So um, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button, leaving a comment or uh, subscribing to the channel. Um, and there's more uh, gardening tips and advice on my website and there'll be a link below the video. Entering the polytunnel, I'm really pleased with what's happening inside the polytunnel at the moment. So this is 80 or 90 percent tomato plants and I have a few cucumber plants as well. Um, hopefully it's coming through on the camera but these tomato plants are now at the height of the polytunnel so they're almost two meters in height. They're absolutely covered in flowers. In the cooler weather for the last two to three weeks with plenty of rain, obviously the rain doesn't get in here but the cooler weather has helped. The leaves are still curly let me see if I can get a, a little closer in here to have a look at these leaves. But some of the leaves are now looking, uh, are looking more healthy. But whether the leaves are curled or not, it doesn't seem to have impeded the flowering or the development of the tomatoes. So many of the plants now have small green tomatoes on them. And some of the tomatoes aren't small at all. So if I position the camera here and then to try and move it around. So these tomatoes here are about golf ball size or a little larger. Um, actually, these tomatoes here, it's probably easier to take a view at. And most excitingly of all, at least from my perspective, um, are these cherry tomatoes. So this is Sun Gold, my favourite variety actually. It's the sweetest variety that I grow. And today I've harvested the first tomato off them. Um, fingers crossed there's hopefully many more to come. You can hopefully see there that the trusses are absolutely loaded with small tomatoes all the way up the plants. So it's difficult to guess, but at the moment I'd say there's easily a hundred, perhaps 200 tomatoes forming on these plants. Now, um, aside from tomatoes, I do have these cucumber plants and they are starting to really accelerate their growth. So as with tomatoes, I grow them up twine, which is suspended from wire, and the wire is suspended from the frame of the polytunnel itself. And what I do is I curl the leading stem of the plants around the twine, which gives them plenty of support. And these plants are... So these are the cucumber plants and they've got plenty of fruits on them. I, if I remember the largest fruit or the biggest fruit is right at its base just there. Hopefully it's possible to see that on the, on the camera. It's a little low down to be honest but my attitude is that um, if it grows well and turns green I'll pick it, uh, even if it's a little bit smaller, I think, uh, than, the, than the mature ones. I, I believe this variety is Telegraph. Tele oh no, this is a mini muncher cucumber. So actually that cucumber there is not far off being ready for picking. So let's have a look. Actually... I don't know if I picked that now. It will certainly help the other cucumbers to come. There we go. So um, it's a little bit light coloured on that side, um, perhaps because it's been in the shade. 
So the first cucumber of the year and I hope many more to, to come. What's growing in the first row next to the polytunnel are my raspberry canes. Now I have had a few raspberries off the canes this year but last summer this row really got out of control. I didn't water the raspberry canes um, and late summer I, I really did a rescue job. I cleared the beds out completely, de-weeded them and actually replanted the canes I was able to salvage. So I'm not surprised that last year's canes have, although bearing fruit haven't, haven't been prolific, but what I'm really excited about is the amount of growth, the new canes which are now forming. So um, this cane there is in, um, has got really healthy looking leaves on and it's actually quite bushy now. So um, I need to do some work tying in these canes, which is, a, which is a job for the next few weeks. If I if I see strong winds forecast on the weather forecast, then I'll tie them in um, as a priority, but I can leave them for now on still days like we have today. There's no need to do that. Further along here is the winter squash. I planted which is really growing nicely um, it's starting to throw out its runners and it may be possible to see there let me just point it out with my finger uh, fruit forming so it's um, it's clearly happy it's being productive and Hopefully by August it will occupy much of the floor space of this area. So further along this row there are more and more raspberry canes. But in this area here, the autumn fruiting canes I planted, well I've got one at the end there, but um, really had some clear space. So I planted runner beans which are doing very um, nicely. So as in the polytunnel I'm growing them up twine they're in flower if I zoom in a little bit hopefully the camera will pick that up they're, they're climbing nicely up the twine actually I've just spied on there there's some black fly on some of the stems so I'll get the spray out so just some water with washing up liquid mixed in just to make life um, a little bit unpleasant for the for the black fly and to stop that outbreak developing more than it needs to. A quick tour of the hybrid berries. Now on the last video when I described my row of hybrid berries in June I said that birds for some reason kept off the hybrid berries but not so this year. I've had to cover them with nets so pretty much like putting a horse blanket on a horse. All I've done is thrown big nets over the hybrid berries to make it more difficult for birds to get to them. And at the base there, um, hopefully it's possible to see on the camera. I haven't secured the nets at the base in any way, um, partly because I've run out of bricks to be able to do it and the nets aren't big enough to reach the ground. Um, but also, um, because if any birds do fancy getting to the berries, I don't actually want to um, get them caught in the net. Sometimes their, their, their feet, or if feet's the right word, get caught in the net. I really don't um, want that to happen. So sometimes having a net a little bit loose at the base, if a really determined bird wants to have a go, I've, they can also get out. Um, but the reason why I think the birds have taken a fancy to the hybrid berries this year as they haven't been able to get to the fruits inside the fruit cage. So now taking a look inside the fruit cage. Just come along here and remove the bricks which I use to secure the flap that covers the entrance to the fruit cage. Right, so I'll just peel this back. and inside. So at the front here is the red gooseberry bush and this over the last 
week or so really has absolutely come into season so the the branches here are let's see if i can keep this still laden with uh fruit which oh it's prickly fruit though and in a moment i'll come back here and pick as much as i can I really enjoy eating gooseberries fresh, but they also freeze exceptionally well, which is a tactic I often use because um, it's quite difficult to take care of an allotment, pick the fruit and make jams and compots and all the other delicious things all at the same time. I like to freeze the fruit individually on a tray before combining them into bags. So in our freezer we have an ice tray which makes an ideal tray also for freezing fruit. So these are some uh, Taybreeze, breeze, Logan breeze and black currants that I picked yesterday. The advantage of freezing them separately is that it makes the fruit really easy to separate so I can just take some fruit out so some Logan breeze, some raspberries, some blueberries or black currants, red currants, whatever it is, um, in small portions and combine them together to make a fruit smoothie or in larger batches to make jams and compots. Once frozen individually, I then combine all of the individual fruit together in freezer bags. So let's have a look at what I've got in here. So at the moment we've got some um, some gooseberries behind the gooseberries uh, there are some blueberries this has all been freshly picked this year some red currants and behind the red currants a bag a bag full of taybreeze and logan breeze now next to the gooseberry bush is the black currant bush. Now the black currants are turning black and uh, quite a few of them look as though they're ready but they will be better when they uh, when they sweeten. Probably well with the hot weather um, today and over the next few days it may only be a week but um, I'll leave it as long as I can so that the whole bunch is um, jet black and then I'll come and pick them all in one go. I've been harvesting the red currants off this bush for the last 10 days and now all the fruit seems to have ripened so that's a, another job I'll do today tomorrow um, come along and pick as much fruit as I possibly can. Um, if I just lean over here it may be possible to see all, see all the fruit so the red currants, they always hang. Let me see if I can just turn this around. They always hang on the underside of the branches. Then this gooseberry bush here. Actually, I'm feeling these gooseberries. These look nice and juicy now. So um, I'll pick a couple, uh, try them. And if I like the flavor, I'll pick them. And if they need more time to sweeten, then that's what they'll get. And then right at the end here is the tremendous gooseberry bush, which is probably about a metre and a half across now. Although obviously it's a, got a really nice circular shape. And this is also absolutely laden with fruit. So I need to come here as a priority and make sure I get the fruit before it goes over. And that's it. That's the tour of the fruit cage. Moving now to the side of the allotment, away from the fruit cage. So this is the east facing, east facing side, so it gets all the morning sun, which, which is great for the plants here. Um, first row of potatoes. Potatoes are in flower, and they're looking a really good size helped by the amount of rain that we've had recently as is the rhubarb plant so this bed 
is meant to be the rhubarb bed and that plant is now growing nice and big. I actually haven't taken any stems off it this year with the intention of just allowing all the strength to go into the into the plant to develop the crowns but that is looking excellent and at the end here are two uh, dahlia plants um, and these have buds forming on them so I'm excited about that and just as excited that they don't appear to be affected by any black fly so I hope that continues now the strawberries have had a little pause so at peak strawberry time so at the end of May the beginning of June we were having a, a daily crop of strawberries from this bed these are day neutral strawberries um, which means that they should produce strawberries throughout the summer but actually what happened is immediately after the first wave of strawberries they began throwing out these runners and I think all the energy of the plants went into producing runners which is great obviously if, uh, if I wanted more strawberry plants but what's happened over the last week just recently is that the plants have started to produce lots of flowers again so I'm hopeful whether it happens by the end of this month I think that could be a bit early but certainly at some point in July there should be a second wave of strawberries which if that happens would be absolutely delicious and then next to the strawberry bed actually I better not get too close to this because this squash plant has exploded in growth which is great because I wanted it to cover the the fabric here which I haven't been able to cover with a mulch yet so it's looking um, really healthy which hopefully will mean it wants to produce fruit and it's certainly been in flower so um, let's have a look under the leaves here to see if I can find any fruit actually I don't appear I can certainly see quite a few flowers but not not any fruit yet so hopefully that will happen soon and then next to the winter squash I have an apple tree that I only planted in well I can't remember if it was February or March this year but this is uh, this is looking good I actually had a I had a problem with aphids I noticed that ants were farming green fly at the top of the plant so what I did was I put some tree grease around the supports and the trunk of the tree and that stopped the ants climbing up and there are it's actually quite difficult to see perhaps because of the because of the shade maybe if I can just move them into the sunlight it has some um, apples forming whether these apples make it all the way through to harvest time is a another thing but there are a few apples remaining on the tree so there is a chance of success next to the squash are two rows of potato now these potatoes are also doing very well this bed here is actually the bed that was slowest to germinate and now it's beginning to catch up as is this row here all the potatoes are earthed up so uh, it's looking good this year actually for potatoes so if the weather continues as it is plenty of sunshine mixed with um, with rain it could be a bumper year for potatoes this is the garlic bed I'm going to get back to the garlic bed so the garlic bed I harvested just a few minutes ago and I harvested it one because the garlic was going over but also because I want to use this space to grow courgettes which I have back at home so if I have time I'll put the courgettes in and, and, and hopefully show that so next to the old garlic bed are the shallots and the shallots look wonderful at the moment again the combination of sunshine and rain 
seems to be helping them to thrive. If I um, just change the angle here, it may be possible to see the cluster of young shallots which are forming. The only concern actually I have about these shallots is that they are so full of leaf. Whether the energy, whether too much energy is going into the leaf formation and not enough into the forming of the bulbs. But it could be the reverse. It could be that the leaves are so healthy it's able to suck so much energy out of the sky that, um, that the shallots will be good this year. Just have to wait and see. The uh, um, parsnip bed is definitely on its way back. So I had a second sowing of parsnips. So that's the reason why some of the parsnips are quite big. And next to them, it might be quite difficult to see, next to them are very small um, parsnips. So uh, what happened with the first sowing is that something came along and ate 90% of the seedlings. But I've definitely got a few more parsnip seedlings coming through. And now the seedlings are, these, are this size. I don't know why, perhaps because perhaps the leaves don't taste as nice. But I'm reasonably confident that the parsnips at this size won't be eaten by anything. Then next to the parsnip I have a short row, probably a metre, metre twenty worth of beetroot. Probably need to thin that beetroot actually. The um, the beetroot bulbs have a tendency to, to push themselves apart so I'm not overly concerned about the tight spacing but they are now I think a little bit too tight so I'll thin them. I've um, replanted about two or three days ago uh, more parsnip seed for a second row of, uh, of parsnip so that's the bare earth which should be in the middle of the camera at the moment so I had a similar problem with things eating them and then just at the far edge of this bed I have some more uh, beetroot and a few charred leaves that are clearly being enjoyed by something. Let's have a look at this leaf here for example. Yeah something's definitely eating that so I'm feeding a few snails or a slug so that, that's um, unfortunate but I've got enough plants that a few leaves being eaten should still mean um, I'll get a harvest from, uh, from, from some of the other plants. Then next to the what I call the parsnip bed I have um, my New Zealand spinach and more chard and beetroot plants now. I'm really very happy with how the New Zealand spinach is doing. It's really growing nicely. In fact, I'm earmarking that to take some leaves off to, to add to a stir fry. So that's looking really good. And I've got a few chard plants on the right hand side and on the left hand side I have some more beetroot plants and between them I have some chard plants. Now next to that I have um, some kale. Oh it looks as though something's really had a little bit of a feast on that um, kale plant. It's amazing actually um, what happens when when animals get in there that's actually eaten the middle of the plant so I wonder if uh, that could even be a mouse or something that's got in, inside. Uh, next to those uh, kale plants I have um, three cauliflower plants, well actually actually four cauliflower plants and a space where one was completely eaten by something so I need to have a close inspection of this bed to see if I can discover what's gone in and eaten the kale because if I don't deal with that I may lose the, the young cauliflower plants as well. Um, the broad bean, so the, the broad bean bed is now past its um, best. It was attacked, really really heavy attack of black fly. Um, I managed to control that. I didn't defeat it, I controlled it. 
so I could take um, harvest the broad beans off it. I reckon I probably lost 50% of the crop, 50% of the harvest size because um, some of the smaller broad beans and the broad bean flowers were affected. They never came through, but um, at least I did get some harvest off it and I've, har and I've uh, frozen the broad beans. Then this side, I have um, two beds full of potatoes. Now these potato plants are actually the largest plants on the plot, which is surprising given that these beds here were absolutely hit by a late, a late frost that they um, recovered from. So not only have they recovered from the frost, but they've outperformed the other potatoes. I'm not saying the frost helped. I think it's because they're on the far eastern side of the plots and therefore get the most sun. And then right at the end of the plot, I have my blueberry bushes. And these blueberry bushes have really done well this year. Helped mainly because um, we've had wet weather over the last few weeks. And before that, I was able to get down here enough to provide plenty of water to the plants. So I've already had two reasonable sized pickings. So this year the net has done its job, protected the plants, kept the wildlife off. And unlike for the hybrid berries, I've secured the base of this net with bricks. If I hadn't have done that, the, um, the birds would have got in. They absolutely love blueberries, so I would have lost a lot. When the blueberry harvest is complete, I'll remove the net to protect the net um, and also it minimises any possibility of, of birds getting trapped on the netting. To recap then, this uh, first of July tour of the allotment, the blueberries are currently in harvest season, look, looking very good, followed by um, two beds full of potatoes which are in flower. This bed here, the kale and the cauliflower bed that needs some attention. The New Zealand spinach bed with, uh, with chard in at the end there, which is being harvested. Next to that, the parsnip bed. The broad bean bed, which is uh, going over. So I'll clear that up and I will put in the leeks. I haven't mentioned the leeks, but um, I've got some leeks to go in as soon as the broad beans are cleared the courgettes which will be going where the garlic used to be and the shallots which are developing nicely um, two more beds full of uh, potatoes actually if I just walk in this direction past the winter squash past the strawberries these these are the leeks which will be going where the broad beans currently are. Then past the rhubarb bed, that's the rhubarb bed with the dahlias in, and the apple tree next to the squash plant. The fruit cage that is full of gooseberries, black currants, and red currants. The hybrid berries, which are currently being harvested. The row of raspberries that contains another winter squash and some runner beans. Finishing up with the polytunnel. The polytunnel that contains tomatoes, which as of today, excitingly, are in season and with the cucumber plants that as of today are in season two. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If so, please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. After subscribing, click the bell to ensure you're notified every time a new video is added.